Mostly known today for their 1971 proto-doom metal album, Satori, the Flower Traveling Band have an interesting history of attempting to bring heavy rock sound to Japan, and in their later careers, the singer had many successful albums, including one with the Wailers, and the guitarist created his own instrument known as the Sitarla. Watch this video to the end to learn the full history of this radical band. Singer, actor, and record producer Yuya Uchida had begun releasing singles back in 1963 and had released two albums before getting the opportunity to open for the Beatles when they toured Japan in 1966. He befriended John Lennon and later went to England to visit him where he was able to see Jimi Hendrix perform and have his mind blown the first time that he heard Cream. He wanted to bring this heavier psychedelic sound to his home country of Japan and created a group that he called Yuya Uchida and the Flowers. Their album Challenge, released in July of 1969, only included one original song, while the others are covers of songs by Big Brother and the Holding Company, Cream, Hendrix, and Jefferson Airplane. None of these covers are really special enough to go out of your way for, but I was really impressed by the female singer's ability to replicate Janis Joplin, and a lot of people online seemed to praise their cover of White Room. All of the band members appear naked on the album cover as a way to spark some controversy and get some buzz around the group. After this, Yuya Uchida decided to totally reform the band and renamed them Flower Traveling Band, taking a step back from being a vocalist to being just the manager and producer. Joji, George, Wada, from the previous lineup remained on the drums, and three dudes from other popular group sounds bands were brought into the group. Bassist Jun Kozuki came from the band The Tax Man. Hideki Ishima came from The Beavers and played lead guitar and sitar. And Akira Jo Yamanaka was a professional boxer, an actor, and the singer of Four Nine Eights. He never knew his African-American father and unfortunately lost his mother at a young age. I also need to throw out an apology for any pronunciation that I get wrong as I do not speak Japanese. While still unaware of exactly what direction they wanted to take, they recorded a 27-minute psychedelic freakout jam, more in the style of a German krautrock band. Yuya Uchida ended up not wanting to release it, and it was shelved for many years before starting to pop up on some bootlegs like From Pussies to Death in 10,000 Years of Freakout, and later, music composed mainly by humans. The first recordings released by the new lineup was part of a split single in 1970 with a jazz trumpeteer. Yuya Uchida wrote the lyrics for the A-side, Crash, and the B-side, Dupe, begins with Hideki Ishima on sitar. The first album under the name Flower Traveling Band was titled Anywhere, released in October of 1970, and is kind of a second attempt at what the first album by The Flowers tried to accomplish. The cover featured the band, including Yuya, naked on motorcycles, and all of the songs here are covers, except for the harmonica intro and outro played by Joe Yamanaka. The covers on this LP are all extended versions of the original songs, with long solo sections, and are worth going out of your way for if you're a big fan of these guys. Their version of Black Sabbath is actually the first ever recording of a Black Sabbath cover, and is fairly faithful to the original proto-doom metal song. The cover of House of the Rising Sun is so different that it was actually unrecognizable to me for the first couple of minutes. And though I definitely prefer the original, I am obligated to mention that they do an extended version of 21st Century Schizoid Man, as it confirms to me, at least, just how far-reaching that first King Crimson album was and what an inspiration it was to the whole world. Yuya Uchida attempted to put together another experimental band at this point, this time grouping a keyboardist from another group sounds band, The Happenings 4, with Joe Yamanaka and Hideki Ishima for an album that they titled Kiri Kyogen and released in December of 1970 under the name Kunikawachi and His Friends. Later bootlegs of this album are under the name Kunikawachi and Flower Traveling Band, though Jun Kozuki and Joji Wada did not perform on it, so there are different people playing the rhythm section. This album includes the track Works Composed Mainly by Humans, which was later reworked and recorded as a single by Flower Traveling Band in 1971 with the title Map. 
I love that we get to hear Joe Yamanaka singing in Japanese on this album, and I listened to it multiple times through, and we'll probably end up checking out the second Kunikawachi and Friends album, even though it's a totally different lineup. A Canadian jazz rock band called Lighthouse saw the Flower Traveling Band perform at a World's Fair in Osaka in 1970 and suggested that they go to Canada. They relocated to Canada in December of 1970, seeking their chance at international fame, and they joined the label that their friends Lighthouse were under, GRT Records. But before leaving Japan, they spent one day in the studio recording and another day mixing an album of originals so that they had something unique to show off when they arrived. Along with Yuya Uchida, the album credits Ikuzo Orita for production, and he would go on to co-produce later releases as well. The album Satori contains five tracks that all have the name Satori with their matching Roman numerals. I've always felt that it is heavily inspired by the proto-doom metal song Black Sabbath, while incorporating Hideki Ishima's love for Indian and other Oriental musical styles. Most of this progressive, heavy psychedelic music stems from Hideki Ishima's ideas on the guitar, which he would bounce to the other musicians for their input. Joe Yamanaka only sings on three of the tracks, as he believed that it was better to allow for the band to improvise together, and he didn't want too many lyrics holding them back from being themselves and playing passionately together. As is the norm for this band, Joe, with his three-octave range voice, is typically singing in a higher register in English with a very heavy accent, while Hideki Ishima unleashes some wild guitar solos. If you haven't already heard this album, wow, thank you for watching my channel. I hope you give the video a like. But my assumption that most people watching this, who should also give the video a like, have already heard this album tons of times, and I'm not going to go into major detail giving you all the spoilers here. Those of us who have listened to this know that it is still inspirational and excellent to this day. This untainted version of Satori was released in Japan in April of 1971, while the GRT version released in Canada and the US was produced by Paul Hoffert of Lighthouse and included tracks that they recorded in Canada and later appear on the 1972 album Made in Japan, as well as the sitar-driven song Lullaby, which was the B-side to the single Satori 2. The Canadian version of Satori only included three of the songs from Satori and retitled Satori 5 as Satori 3 in order to fit with the numbering system and not confuse audiences. I didn't listen to the Canadian version, but I believe the Satori tracks are all shorter edits than what we get to hear on the Japanese version, and that Satori 1 and 2 are switched, so their titles are switched as well. So the single was actually called Satori Enlightenment, even though we know of it as Satori 2, and it's also probably a shortened version of Satori 2. This Canadian stuff is confusing, and I want to move on from it already. If you're enjoying this video so far, be sure to give me a like and subscribe and comment below. This is my only real source of income right now, that 75 cents to $1.25 a day. So please put it in your heart to support this channel in any way possible. I have merch available, and you can donate to my Bandcamp page by purchasing my song or EP when that's released. I know I could make more money on YouTube by talking about popular bands, but that would defeat the purpose of this channel, which is to try to keep obscure and nearly forgotten bands alive. So if you support that cause, please support the channel, and I appreciate it immensely. Thank you very much. Their next full-length album was recorded in Canada with production help from Paul Hoffert of Lighthouse, as well as Yuya Uchida and Ikuzo Orita. I believe Paul's ideas clashed with the others, and it is likely due to him that this album isn't quite as extreme as Satori. Made in Japan was released in February of 1972, and I personally enjoy it in its entirety, other than the pointless intro track, though I see others online feel that this record is inconsistent and mention the heaviest songs, Kamikaze, Hiroshima, and Spasms, as the highlights. Those people aren't necessarily wrong, but I personally enjoy that the album has quite a bit more variety and that they let us hear some acoustic guitar and other psychedelic sounds. The lyrics on this album are written by Yoko Numura, other than Heaven and Hell, a heavily Hendrix-inspired tune written by Joe Yamanaka that Yoko translated into English. Unfortunately, Joji Wada had tuberculosis during the recording of this album, and the Canadian drummer named Paul DeLong 
had to fill in for him on some of the tracks. The song Hiroshima on this record, which first appeared on the Canadian version of Satori, is actually a reworked version of the instrumental song originally titled Satori 3. And in my opinion, and likely others as well, Hiroshima is ultimately the better option of the two. Made in Japan saw decreasing sales numbers from the previous album, Satori, and not long after its release, the band decided to move back to Japan in March of 1972. They recruited another keyboardist from the band The Happenings 4, Nobuhiko Shinohara, to join them for live shows, and they recorded a hybrid live and studio album that would eventually become a full double album called Makeup, released in February of 1973. For the songs on this album, they wanted to share writing credits a little more, though Joe Yamanaka is credited as a primary composer. I'm not sure if he only wrote lyrics or if he contributed more musical ideas as well. Joji Wada shares some writing credits, and the piano ballad Broken Strings was written by bassist Jun Kozuki. All things considered, it is a pretty good progressive psychedelic rock album with a lot of variety, but again, anyone wishing for an unapologetically heavy album like Satori may be a little disappointed by some of the softer moments on this album. The addition of keyboard makes it sound a little more like Deep Purple at times, and it isn't as guitar-driven as their previous works. That isn't to say there aren't some great heavy rockers here, though. I believe numerous bands did covers of the track Slowly But Surely, and rightfully so. That song rips, and it keeps getting stuck in my head. Even though I haven't listened to the band for a few days, I keep getting that song in my head. The third side is an over 24-minute version of Hiroshima, with long guitar, bass, and drum solo sections. The album also includes a live version of Blue Suede Shoes by Carl Perkins with Yuya Uchida on vocals, and you can go ahead and skip that track. The plan for early 1973 was to tour Japan alongside the Rolling Stones, but when Mick Jagger's visa was rejected, all of the tour dates were canceled, and eventually, Flower Traveling Band decided that they should try going on a hiatus. A long hiatus. Jun Kozuki and Joji Wada would contribute to some recordings throughout the years. I think Jun might have even composed some of the Dragon Quest music. But Hideki Ishima and Jo Yamanaka were most active with their solo careers, and they often still collaborated with each other from time to time, along with Joji Wada. Hideki Ishima released his only solo album in 1973 with the title One Day, which included appearances by Joji Wada and Flower Traveling Band's touring keyboardist, Nobuhiko Shinohara. He then joined with some other dudes from The Happenings 4, including Nobuhiko Shinohara, in a new band called Trans Am. That band released several albums before disbanding in 1981, but I believe Ishima and Shinohara left while working on music for a TV show in 1976. Ishima was later in the band's The Don Juan R&R Band, and again played with Nobuhiko Shinohara in a band called Ko Kolo. Joe Yamanaka's first solo album, Joe, was released in 1974 and also includes Ishima and drummer Joji Wada. He continued to occasionally appear in movies, and when Bob Marley died, Joe was the obvious choice to replace him in The Wailers. Just joking. But their album together, Joe Yamanaka and The Wailers, Reggae Vibration, is actually pretty solid. That was released in 1982, and Yamanaka would continue to sing reggae in his solo career. Jumping ahead to the year 2000, Hideki Ishima's dream finally came true, when his design for a sitar combined with an electric guitar was finally developed and delivered into his hands. Since then, that has been his primary instrument. Of course, with the rise of the internet, many bands from all over the world reunited in order to start pleasing new fan bases from all around the world that they were able to communicate with online. And Flower Traveling Band finally ended their hiatus in November of 2007. This time with Nobuhiko Shinohara as an official member of the band and no assistance from Yu Yu Ichida. Apparently there had been several discussions about them getting back together just based on nostalgia to go tour Satori or whatever but that wasn't pleasing to Hideki Ishima, and when his rhythm section was eager to play and they all decided to actually make new material together, Hideki decided to join the band. 
So September of 2008 saw the release of the first new album by the band in 35 years, We Are Here. The thing I like most about this album is that it truly is not just a cash-in on nostalgia. The band members had grown a lot in basically half a lifetime, and this album reflects that they are not the same people, though they did state that it was as if nothing had changed and that they functioned together extremely well. But this is also my least favorite thing about the album. I think they might have stepped a little bit too far away from what they are known for because this has too much of a pop appeal to it and it sounds like they are just bouncing between two chords, maybe three chords, on a lot of the songs with maybe one change and it just doesn't please my progressive appetite. It isn't necessarily a bad album, it certainly has its moments and catchy songs, but there's a lot of music in the world and I would rather just listen to Made in Japan or Satori again than keep trying to let We Are Here grow on me. At some point in time, Jun Kozuki changed his name to Jun Kobuyashi, and We Are Here was produced by his son, Ben Kobuyashi, in Canada. The band went on some tours and released a live DVD in 2009, but unfortunately, the future they were building together came to a very sad decline when Joe Yamanaka was diagnosed with cancer and eventually lost his battle to the horrible disease on August 7th of 2011 at the age of 64. Thank you for all of your awesome music, Yamanaka-san. Rest in peace. So that was the official end of the band. Wait, but what about the guy I started the story with, Yuya Uchida? What happened to him? Well, of course, he continued to appear in movies, release albums, and produce albums. His love for 50s music saw him even partner with The Ventures for an album, and he produced an album by the original female singer of Yuya Uchida and the Flowers, among many others. He also appeared alongside Joe Yamanaka in a 2002 film called Deadly Outlaw Rekka, which I unfortunately wasn't able to find out how to watch online, but the film uses the album Satori as its soundtrack. His actress wife, Kieran Kiki, passed away in September of 2018, and Yuya followed her the following March. He was 79 years old. I hope you enjoyed this video thoroughly, and if not, tell me why. Uh, and if you did, give it a like. And if you didn't, give it a like anyway and consider subscribing for more. I really, really appreciate you watching the video. Maybe you could share it with your friends that love Flower Traveling Band because you have so many friends that love Flower Traveling Band or that should love Flower Traveling Band and this could be their introduction, right? And until I make another crazy video, have a happy listening session.